Good morning and praise the Lord. I thank God for God has kept us. He has been with us and he is Ebenezer. We can testify of that. And let me also encourage you to focus not on the cloud but on the silver lining. As we begin the scripture, let me ask that we open our Bibles to the book of Levit Leviticus chapter 26. That's where we'll read from. But before then, let me ask that we may stand on our feet in honor of the reading of God's word. What a privilege and an honor that we can own the scriptures and read them as we wish, even declare them publicly. We bless God for that privilege and opportunity. So let us pray as we pray for the reading of God's word. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you this morning for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of health. And this morning, Almighty God, I pray that you will speak to me and through me. May your word correct, teach, and rebuke us, Almighty God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, may you be also an encouragement to us, O Lord. Jehovah, in the name of Jesus, we also thank you for the offering that has been given for the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. Jehovah, I thank you for the tithes, for the offerings, and for the first fruits, Almighty God. I thank you, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. May you receive them. May, they, may this act of worship, may you receive it, Almighty God. May you receive that which your people have given, Almighty God. What we have given, for it's from our hearts and with joy. Father, there are those who desired to give, but had nothing this morning. Father, I pray that you will bless them. That next Sunday they will be enjoined together with the rest of us, Almighty God, in this privilege and opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Leviticus chapter 26 and from verse 1. And I'm reading from the NIV version. Leviticus 26 and from verse 1. Do not make idols or set up an image or a sacred stone for yourselves. And do not place a carved stone in your land to bow before it. I am the Lord your God. <clears throat> Observe my Sabbath. And have reverence for my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you rain in its season. And the ground will yield its crop and the trees of the field their fruit. Verse 5. Your threshing will continue until grape harvest. And the grape harvest will continue until planting. And you will eat of the food you want and live in safety in your land. I will grant peace in the land and you will lie down and no one will make, it, will make you afraid. I will remove savage beasts from the land and the, and the sword will not pass through your country. You will pursue your enemies and they will fall by the sword before you. Five of you will chase a hundred and a thousand will chase ten thousand. And your enemies will fall by the sword before you. I will look on you with favor and make, your f and make you fruitful and increase, and increase your numbers. And I will keep my covenant with you. You will still be eating last year's harvest when you have to remove it out to make room for the new. Amen. I will put my dwelling place among you. And I will not abhor you. I will walk among you and be your God. And you will be my people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt so that you would no longer be slaves to the Egyptians. I broke the bars of your yoke and enabled you to walk with heads held high. In Jesus' name we read, Amen. Please have your seats as the Lord ministers to us through me. This morning, I want to challenge you on the place of worship in the heart of God. God takes worship so seriously that he set up, of the 12 tribes of Israel, he set up an entire tribe. Their sole purpose of existence for the Levites was to serve at the temple, but before then, at the tabernacle. And this was it. That's all they did. 
That's all they did, cascading downwards from the great grandfather, the grandfather, the father, and the son, and onwards. That's all they lived for. It's not that one son became this and the other, no. If you're a Levite, that's what God has called you. It's a lifelong ministry, as in that's the call over your life as a Levite. And I want to challenge us today, friends, if that is how serious God considers worship, worship to him that he set up an entire tribe. I want to challenge you. On Sunday morning, taking seriously the worship of the Lord, the God who set up worship, where he set up an entire tribe and took it very, very seriously. I've seen people who take it very lightly. You know, they can watch it whatever time. The Bible says, friends, that let us gather together. Let us not, in Hebrews 10.25, do not give up the good habit of meeting together. Even if it is online and it is not in a physical sense. Let us gather in that hour as the river of God church. Let us have church together. Let us encourage one another as the day of the Lord draws near. Let God know that yes, I am not in church physically. But the place of worship, the place of the service is sacred for me. And that's a personal choice. It, it is personal to everyone. Because I'm telling you, friends, you can be screaming on top of your head, you know what, I honor God, I love him with my time. I but when it's service time, you're not there. You know, you can't be a serious, uh, obedient Christian and you don't, have, you don't honor the place of church, the place of fellowship. It is an integral place. And I'm not saying that that place will replace the place of you giving your life to Jesus Christ. Or you having quiet time with the Lord alone, reading the scriptures on your own, praying on your own. But there's a place for corporate prayer. And God took it so seriously that he set up an entire tribe. He set apart an entire tribe. The Levites, and that's all they did. They owned nothing. They didn't have any other jobs. They didn't own land, nothing. They were paid out of that which they served there for generations and generations and generations. That's how serious God takes worship. And then, you don't just wake up. He didn't just wake up and say you will worship on whatever day. And he says this, that you should take that day seriously. Here scripture reminds us in Le Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 3. The Bible says this, friends. There are six days when you may work. So the Lord is reminding us that there are six days that you may work. Leviticus chapter, three, chapter 23 and verse 3. There are six days when you may work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest. So God calls us to have a day of rest. And I'm telling you, some of you who are looking down on the day of rest, you start getting ulcers and high blood pressure because you don't have a day of rest. And we were created to have a day of rest. Even God on the seventh day, he rested. And he demanded of us to rest. That in these days, when he was saying this, in the law of Moses, if you broke the day of Sabbath, you were killed. You died. And remember, the children of Israel were even taken to captivity because so that the land will have rest for 70 years. It's that serious that it is imperative for us to have a day of rest. And then it continues to say this, that on that day of rest, a day of sacred assembly, that it's that day where we should set apart and worship the day. And here I'm, I'm saying, and, and worship the Lord. And here I'm saying that it is not for us to worship the day. It can be any day. Because as you go on, he says this, you are not to do any work wherever you live. That it doesn't matter where you live. It is a Sabbath to the Lord. So it doesn't matter where you live. Whether you're in the Middle East, you know, where there are Sunday, is on Friday. That day, make it sacred. Rest on that day and worship. Now, I want you to imagine, as a family, if you don't have that time as a family to commune with God, what are we telling our children? The church is not important. We go when it is convenient. When we are able to, we go to church. It is not a must. That's what you're saying. Because communication 
65% of communication is nonverbal. What are you saying by the actions that you're presenting before your children, or even your neighbors, or even your husband, or even the people who have come to visit you on that day? And I know nowadays people are not visiting as much, but they are still visiting. Let it be known that for you, whether it's at 6 in the morning, or at 7, or at 11, or at 10 when it's a children's service, make it formal. You know, let there be fanfare towards the service. Because remember, it is worship unto the Lord, not unto the pastor. You're not doing it for me. You're not doing it for the river of God. You are doing it for God. Hallelujah. Our God, Jehovah, the creator of the universe, who demands of us. Let me also tell you, friends, that uh, in Deuteronomy, in the Ten Commandments, the fifth commandment is keep the Sabbath day holy. Of the ten things that he wrote with his finger, because the first tablet that he gave to Moses, he wrote it himself. Friends, the Ten Commandments were God's idea, not Moses. And out of that, he said, put a day of rest aside. And I have seen people who don't care about rest. You know, because every day, they say time is money. And even on Sunday, you know, you know, let's go make money. Let's go make money. Let me ask you a question, friends. When is it enough? When is it enough? And you know, you can have it all and not enjoy it. Or it doesn't bring you joy. Or it doesn't even fulfill you. Or God doesn't even give you the health to enjoy it. Or it drives you to hell. And I pray that we shall honor God, even with our time and in our worship. And this is just a reminder for us that even if you are at home and you're not coming to church physically, remember this, you're still worshiping a living God. And he says this, those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the time for you to worship him in that sense has come, and that time is now. John 4, 23 and 24. That day has come. That season of worshiping God in spirit and in truth has come. Let us not give up that good habit. Set up that time. I know some of you have, you know, started well, but now you're not there anymore. You know, you just, at some point you will watch it. At some point the kids will worship. You tell them, and you make sure you watch the service today, you know, because you're sleeping in, or you're going to wash the car, or you're running to the farm or you're going to another function, or you're just doing something else, or you're even there watching CNN, or catching up with a series that you've been watching. Friends, remember, his name is Jehovah, and he desires, he demands worship. Let us make it formal, because we love him. Hallelujah, and praise the Lord. And here he says, there are some benefits. There are some benefits when you worship him. He says here in Deuteronomy chapter 26, as we just read, do not make idols. Do not worship other things. As in that time when you're not in the worship, because you, this is the time you're supposed to be in the service, worshiping God. He says, do not give up the good habit of meeting together, to worship him, making that time sacred, to have a sacred assembly, whether it is physical or it is online. So this thing that you're going to do when you're supposed to be in the service, now that is becoming an idol. Because it is what you are elevating above. I was challenging some couple somewhere, and I was asking them, <coughs> sorry, when you're making decisions about your, your family, you know, when you get a job invitation, you know, where you have been asked to go work abroad, and they're not allowing you to bring your family together. So you're looking at the shillings and cents and uh, you know your career growth and you're looking at your family and who will, will win this battle? You know, is it shillings and cents or your wife and your children? And in most cases, unfortunately, the shillings and cents tend to win all the time. And that's why we have no time either for friends or even family and our wives because of shillings and cents. And now that has, we have cascaded that downwards, even to the things of God, that we look at shillings and cents in light of God, and we're like, you know what, let me go make the money, because God is interested more with the shillings and cents than I will give. God is interested in your heart first. Hallelujah. 
And so here, I want you to see the benefits. He says here, observe my Sabbath and have reverence for my sanctuary. Have reverence. Let me ask you, friends. Even that time in your house, when you're saying it's time for a service, how would you describe it? You know, if there was an observer, as we have the election observers, if there was an, a silent observer there who's looking at how you're handling yourself before the service premieres at, at 11 or at 7 or at 6, and they want to see if there is reverence in your home for the God you're worshipping in that service. And I know that we should worship God all the time, not just during that. But he says here, have reverence for my sanctuary. That during that time of worship, of that service, that that sitting room where you are doing that service, let, it, let us call it a sanctuary at that point. Do you have reverence for that sanctuary? Or it's at that time where everybody has come with their bread and everything and tea, and that's when you're having late break, you're having brunch. And so everyone is eating as you're listening to the worship, you know. No form of reverence in the presence of God. And he says this, if you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, he says, I will send you rain. I will send you rain. That there will be no famine. I will send you rain. But this is the point I like. He says this, I will send you rain in its season. You know, he can send you rain. It rains two days here, then out a week later it rains. You know, that it's, it's unpredictable. But he's saying here that my blessings will be predictable. You can predict that within this month I will give you. You will not get into seasons where, you know what, it rained here and we are not ready. We didn't know when to expect the rain, so we didn't even know when to plow or to prepare or put the seed. Because you can put the seed and the rains don't come. But it says that I will bring the rain and I will bring it in its season. That it shall be predictable. Hallelujah. And we bless God for his grace. That our God is predictable. That you can predict that he says he will come and he will come and he will not be late. Praise the Lord. But why when we obey? And let me tell you something, friends. This is between you and God. Because I'm not there in your house. And even when you come to church... I don't know the state of your heart, but let us get to the place where that we hold the place and the sanctuary of God sacred. And that sanctuary can even be in your sitting room. The second promise that he says here, that the ground will produce its yield. He promises that you will plant, he will bring rain, it shall be predictable, and that which you have planted will yield fruit. Hallelujah. It will yield fruit. That even your fruit trees will produce their yield a hundredfold. That's a second promise. And then the third one, he says that you will have more than enough. The ground will produce more than enough. He will do more than you could ever think, dream, or imagine. Praise the Lord. That's the promise. That's the promise. That you, you will have more than enough. That you will have more than enough. Hallelujah. I will send rain in its season. The ground will yield its crop. And trees in the field will bear their fruit. Your threshing floor will continue until grape harvest. And grape harvest will continue until planting. And you will eat all the food you want and live in safety in your land. And so the fourth point here is that we shall live in safety. We shall not live in fear. And you know, friends, you can live in fear. But he says that he, we shall live in safe habitation. Safe habitation. He will protect us that we live in safety if you obey his commands. The sixth point, and it's found in verse 6, he says this, I will grant peace in the land and you will lie down and no one will make you afraid. So the peace will not just be because of you, because you have honored God. Even your neighborhood, there will be peace. At your place of work, there will be peace. There will be peace in this country because we honor God. Because we live in obedience to his word. Praise the Lord. And it continues, it doesn't end there. The story continues to say this, that our enemies will fall by the sword. 
which means that we shall not be conquered by our enemies. We shall love them, we shall forgive them. But God will lay a table before our enemies. He says this, that five will chase a hundred. Five of us will chase a hundred. Or a hundred will chase ten thousand, depending on your faith. On what you're willing to do. If you dare God, <coughs> if you dare God greatly, you will do greater things. So five of us will chase a th- uh, five of us will chase a hundred. So f- twenty for everyone. But when we are a hundred, we shall chase ten thousand. So depending on your faith, God will still be with you. And for me, my favorite part is verse 9, which is that God's favor will be with us. He will be with us. We shall be fulfilled and increased in number. You shall live and not die. Because you cannot increase in number if you're dying. So it means that you shall live and not die, even in this season, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes, you might be affected or even infected, but you will not die because he's promised us here that we shall increase in number in the name of Jesus Christ. He continues to say, um, in conclusion to this portion of scripture, that you still will be eating last year's harvest when you have to move it out to make room for the new. Hallelujah. That there will be so much that you will have to remove what you had last year's harvest because you haven't, as in he will give you more than enough, more than you can consume, so that you will have to move it out to create room for new harvest. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. But only if, only if, only if you do not make idols or set up an image or sacred stone for yourselves, and do not place carved stones in your land to bow down to. And let me tell you something. You can worship your work when your work replaces the things of God. When your work replaces the place of God. Chasing the things of this world. And it is, not, it is possible. And it is easy to do that. And you can get yourself there. And I want to tell you something, friends. Right now, you be the judge of how you're handling things. And all of us come from different churches because I know there are people who are not part of River of God who go to other churches. What time is a service in your church? And it's that hour of your church that your church service is that you will be faithful to that which you are called to as a local assembly where you gather with your fellowship. You gather with the members of your church. You gather with your pastor. You gather with your family in sacred assembly, where we are saying we are worshiping the Lord. In this house, we worship the Lord. And I'm telling you, you will never beg for bread. You will live and not die. It says here, when you set apart that day, and I know, and here we have been reminded in verse, in chapter 23, in chapter 23 of Leviticus, that there are six days when you may work. There are six days that you may work. So on this one day, give it to the Lord. Dear friends, I beseech thee, I beg you, give God a day in your week where you rest from your troubles, from your work, but also in sacred assembly. You lift up your hands in worship. We shall be faithful. We shall do our part to make sure that our services get to you, that they are streamed on on time, that they are of good quality, that the recording is up to date, then you do your part. We shall set the platform so that we shall worship the Lord together. And the Lord will bless us. And so be faithful, dear friends. Choose to be faithful, you and your family, or even you as a single person, you know, where you are, whether it's on your phone, in your bed sitter, you're putting it there and you're saying, from six to seven, This is my sacred assembly. You dress up for church and you stand there and say, God, I'm presenting myself as a living sacrifice, acceptable to thee. And as I lift up my hands in worship, may it be acceptable before you, almighty God, and have mercy 
on me. And you worship with us. And we shall lead you. We shall bring you the word. And I pray that God will grant me the courage to speak the truth to you. Praise God. And I pray, my, I pray that whether it is on that phone, in that bed sitter, or in your flat, or in your mansion, wherever you are, and whatever level you are at, whether you are alone, whether you are a family, or whatever your situation is, let us worship the Lord faithfully. Because, friends, there are benefits to it. But more than that, because we love him and we care. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, almighty God, that we shall live and not die. That you shall meet us at our point of need according to your riches in glory. Jehovah, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that, Lord, your word says, almighty God, that we shall hold the sacred assembly, a day of sacred assembly, that we shall hold that day holy, that we shall set apart time to rest and to hear from you, Almighty God, to lift up our hands and declare that you are God alone and to worship you, O Lord. And I pray that this worship will be acceptable before thee. Jehovah, in the name of Jesus Christ, you went into the trouble of setting up an entire tribe to just serve, Oh God, set up a day because you desire worship from the inner part, innermost part of our hearts. I pray, Almighty God, that our worship will be acceptable before you. Where we've sinned against thee, forgive us. And in your wrath, remember mercy. And thank you for this far we can say truly that you have been on our side. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May his favor be evident over your life. May none of your bones ever be broken. May that which is yours, that the devil has taken or touched, may our God in heaven restore to you a hundredfold. May his peace that surpasses human understanding keep your hearts. May his joy fill and saturate every inch of your home. Remember you have the power of life and death on your tongue. Declare life on the issues that surround your life, over the nation of Kenya, the nation of Israel, and as the Lord may lead you. Not forgetting, on every road you travel on, every, any road, declare that on this road today, no one will lose their life or have their property destroyed. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. I love you as your pastor. And God be with us all. Amen.